Brother and sister, thank you for coming tonight's talk. Can we all rise? Put your palms together and we'll start chanting Sangha Vandana. And when Bhante has sit down and we, we still com continue chanting till the end. Then we stop. Okay. Supati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ujupati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sango Nyaya Pati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sango Samichi Pati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sango Yadidang Chattari Purisa Yugani Ata Purisa Pugala Esa Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ahuneyo Bahuneyo Dakineyo Anjali Karaniyo Anuttarang Punyaketang Lokasati. Okay, you may sit down. Good evening, Bhante. Before we invite Bhante to start the, the talk, I will uh, give a brief introduction to, uh, about Bhante to everyone. Bante Abarika Siri Sumana. In short, we normally address Bante as Bante Sumana. He was ordained as a Sri Lankan Buddhist monk in 1998. Bante Sumana obtained his higher ordination in 2007. Bante graduated from the University of Rahuna, Sri Lanka, with a BA in Buddhist philosophy and obtained his second BA degree in Buddhist studies from the Buddhist College of Singapore. Bhante has also completed his master's degree in Buddhist studies from the Maha Chula Longkong Raja Vidalaya University, in short, it's called MCU, as well as the diploma course in Buddhist counseling at the Dot Connection Growth Center. Bhante is currently teaching early Buddhism basic doctrine to diploma students and Buddhism and modern issues to master students in BPC, which means uh, Buddhist and Pali College in Mangara Vihara. So uh, tonight, the topic of the talk is patience. So uh, Bhante will start with the three refuge, five precepts, then followed by the tongue. Namo Buddhaya. Good evening to all of you. To observe five precepts, say Namo Tassa three times. Namo Tassa. Saranang Gachami Saranang Gachami 
ಗಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ಸಂಗಂ ಸರಣ ಗಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ದ್ವಿತೀಯಿ ಬುಧ ಸರಣ ಗಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ದ್ವಿತೀಯಿ ಧಮ್ಮ ಸರಣ ಗಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ದ್ವಿತೀಯಿ ಸಂಗಂ ಸರಣ ಗಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ತಥಿಯಿ ಬುಧ ಸರಣ ಗಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ತಥಿಯಿ ಧಮ್ಮ ಸರಣ ಗಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ತಥಿಯಿ ಸಂಗಂ ಸರಣ ಗಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ಪಾತಿ ಪಾತಮನಿ ಸಿಖಾಪದ ಸಮಿ ಅದಿನ್ನಾದಿರಮನಿ ಸಿಖಾಪದ ಸಮಿ ಕಾಮೇಶು ಮಿಚಾಚಾರಮನಿ ಸಿಖಾಪದ ಸಮಿ ಮುಸಾವಾದಿರಮನಿ ಸಿಖಾಪದ ಸಮಿ ಸುರಾಮೀರಯ ಮಜ್ಜಪಮಾದಟ್ಟಾನಾವಿರಮನಿ ಸಿಖಾಪದ ಸಮಿ ಸಾಧು 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 ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಬಿ ಸೀಟೆಡ್ now we are going to take few minutes of mindfulness practice so be prepared your mind and sit comfortably concentrate your mind over your breathing close your eyes take a deep breath inhale and exhale give yourself some time to settle down your thought slowly bring your attention to your face observe the darkness that you can see
and slowly focus on the natural breathing in and breathing out. Observe as it is. You are not going to control your breathing. Just observing and be mindful about natural breathing. And you are aware this cooling air goes through your nostrils and you are breathing out a bit warm air circulated inside your chest and lungs. Feel this cool and warm air and be aware about breathing in and breathing out. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Slowly open your eyes and Namo Buddhaya and good evening to all of you. Uh, I'm so happy to see you all here today and many of these faces are very familiar faces, right? So which is good. So today we are going to discuss about our topic, patience. Uh, since there are a number of people, I think either you want to develop your patient or else most of you are here, those who are losing their patience, right? Two possibilities, right? Either you want to develop or you want to know about more how to be patient. Since this topic is a very broad topic, I think in the Sutta Pitaka, 
regarding if you check under the name of patient, there are more than 30 over suttas appear as a list. So this is a very broad topic. Therefore, I decided to divide this topic into three main parts. So what are these three parts? First one, patient in general. What do we have and what we know about patient in general and common sense? The second part, patient as a form of virtue. And the third part, patient as a perfection. In Pali, paramita. So these are the three major aspects that we are going to discuss under this topic. And of course, each of these main topics consist of some subtopics. You can see, right? Under patient in general, we are going to discuss what is patient. And why do we need to be patient? What makes us impatient? Boundaries of patient? And how to develop patient? So now with these subtopics, you may have some certain ability to connect your thoughts of patient, which, we, which you were known to, and also which you have learned, are in this, under these subtopics. Friends, here, when we are talking about patient in general, we are going to see the superficial level of patient. And later you can, whenever we are going through these uh, subtopics, you need to contemplate on your life experiences in order to internalize what I am, am I sharing. So it will be beneficial for all of you to understand it better. So this is going to be a quite long discussion or a Dhamma talk, but you have no choice. Why? You have to be patient, right? <laughs> okay. Now, what is patient? Simply, we can uh, elaborate patient as an ability, enduring a long wait calmly or dealing with annoying problems without frustration. Now when, we, when you see this slide, you can see three uh, words lines have been underlined, right? It is an ability. So commonly, when human beings face this evolutionary process, we were able to develop our mindset. Even Buddhism discuss in the same aspect, manasaya usannata manusso, which means the capability and ability that human beings are possessing is unique. We have a unique ability of developing and cultivating our mind. So patient is one of the aspects that we can develop. Now you can see some hope, right? If you are always getting angry, there is a hope because it is an ability that which we can develop it. And not only that, being patient means you have to be endeavor and also wait calmly when you are facing an annoying situation or a problem. So this is one of the factor that under patience that we can develop. We have to go through, wait calmly. But it is not complete. You can be wait calmly when you are facing an issue 
physically and verbally, but how about your mind? So that is the aspect that we need to develop. That is why it has been mentioned here, without frustration. So it is an ability to control our mind and also verbal and physical senses. So these three components must come together to complete patience. Now, in our lifetime, I'm sure that you all may have experiences, several incidents in your life. You are waiting calmly without any verbal or physical uh, interaction. But have you ever obse observed your mind? It is just like a hell, right? You are trying yourself best to control your verbal and physical actions. But your mind inside, I want to fight. And I want to hit. I want to shout. So that is what happening inside our mind. Therefore, whenever we are facing some frustrating situations, we need to keep remind ourselves, it is not complete patience if we are being patient only with our verbal and physical aspect. Now, we are moving to the second subtopic. Why do we need to be patient? Very simple. Why? Because we are human beings. And not only that, we are civilized human beings. All of you agree with me, right? Those of you are sitting here, all of you are human beings, right? And I'm sure that you are living in a first world country, Singapore, you are civilized. Then you have no choice. <laughs> but to be patient with difficulties, right? So human beings, when we went through this evolutionary process, we came and we uh, climbed up the ladder and became number one species. So if we are number one species, we have to act like one. Whenever we are losing our patience, whenever we are throwing our temper, we are not practicing our human virtue or human ability. Similarly, when we are civilized men, we need to take that responsibility even higher. So these are the two reasons. There are no any other reason. You no need to be a Buddhist or you no need to be a spiritual person. You no need to be any kind of a different, uh, uh, all those uh, religious labels and all those things are not important. To be patient, you have to be only a human being. Therefore, those religious aspects we can keep aside. If you are thinking that you are a Buddhist, then you have even higher ability to develop patient into a next level. So I suppose most of you are uh, pronouncing yourself as Buddhist here, right? So you have even a higher demarcation. That need to be clarified. Now, in all over the world, different part of the world, that we can see different kind of analogies being given when we are losing our temper. In Sri Lanka, usually we say, uh, when someone is angry, we say that he has been possessed by uh, a yak or a demon, right? So this kind of understanding is there. Not only that, this kind of explanation can be seen in Western world as well. Probably you have seen, right? Werewolves. There are some stories related to human beings are turning into a form of wolves. And once they are becoming wolf, they have no idea what they are doing. Similar concept can be applied in to ourselves whenever we are angry. 
this, whenever you are angry, this is the transformation happening inside your mind as well. If you go and see your face in front of a mirror, in the mirror, you see a werewolf whenever you are angry. You can see how your blood is racing, heartbeat is racing, and your body becoming stiff, and that uncomfortable feeling. So, we have to be very much careful about our mental thought process, how it governs, and our physical way of uh, behaving whenever we are angry. So this is something that you can frame and put in your bedroom or your working table. I am not going to be a werewolf, right? So this is a good image that you can frame and keep it with you. And the third topic, what makes us impatient? In order to be patient, we can address this question not about only being patient, but what makes us impatient. So we can think and we can see what are the negative aspects that we are cultivating whenever we are angry. So what, what are the things that uh, makes you uh, impatient in your life? There are so many things, right? Many. But all those many things can conclude under two things, people and situation, right? Nothing but with the associating people is difficult and most difficult thing in this world. So whenever we are angry, if we find out the reasonings you can come to either these two solutions. It is because of people or a person make it and also a situation. And these are the two things always creates problem. Now there is another issue, right? There are eight billion people in this world. Can we run and hide? We can't, we have no choice. So how we should deal with these eight billions of people? No need to go 8 billion, at least 5 million, 8 million Singaporeans, right? How? But don't worry. There is a very simple method to classify this issue. Even though there are 8 billion people in this world, we can deduct them into three major groups. Those people who are stronger than us, those people who are weaker than us, those people who are equal to us. So you have no fear now, right? No 8 billion people now, only three groups, right? Stronger people. Whenever you are in a working environment, your office or your class or all other activities, whenever you are dealing with yourself, uh, you may come across people who are stronger than you. So you want to be strong like them, but there are some limitations in human life, right? Sometimes the physical limitations, and sometimes mental limitation, and sometimes social limitations. So how harder that you are trying to go one step above of this kind of strong people, since they are inheriting this ability of being strong, they are always one step in front of us. So what are we going to do this kind of people who are giving us issues, just like your boss? He is one step right in front, right? No choice that you have to deal with them. They are strong mentally, physically, and socially with the positions. So the issue is here. The way that we are looking at this problem is that causing us impatience. If you see a person stronger than you, if you, you can try to win them by your mental and physical or social, different kind of ways. But if you can't do it, you have to be patient with them. When you are being patient with strong people, you are going to practice non-jealousy towards them. Do not harbor jealousy those who are richer than you 
or those who are capable than you. It does not make any harm for them, but it makes miserable life for ourselves. That is why we need to be patient. And the people who are weaker than us, very easy, right? We can bully them. No, we can't do that. Because we are human beings. We have some ethics and we have some certain guidelines to follow. Whenever you see a weaker person, you need to compassionate towards them. That is how you are practicing patience. Now, uh, suppose that in your office, a new member came to join with your office and your boss asked you to teach them how to work with the office and all those things. And this person is a weak person. How much patience that you need to carry this person through this working environment, right? But no choice. We have to support them. We are not going to get angry with them. We have to support them with kindness. In order to appear this kindness, first of all, we need to cultivate patience within us. And then we are going to the equal people, right? So those who are equal, how we are going to be patient with them? We can have a healthy kind of a, a, a challenge or healthy kind of a, a what do you call a, any uh, tasking or doing what they, we are doing or taking that same exam with us or whatsoever the activity that we are taking, you can have a healthy kind of a, uh, of healthy kind of a, a healthy kind of a environment. But it's okay to challenge them with healthy manner. But if you are going to too extreme and making endless of scrabbling and also pursuing and fighting and all those things, it is not going to help. Therefore, whenever you see a person who is equal to you, you can be mindful about your activities and be a good friend with him, supporting each other and continue this journey. Not because that you can't overturn them or you can't go one step ahead from them. It is because it is going to be healthy if we make our mind into a peaceful stage. So that is what, how we are dealing with equal people. And we are going to situations. There are two different kind of situation in, this, in our life that we are facing. Agreeable situation and disagreeable situation. With the agreeable situation, of course, uh, most of us can be uh, patient. And how about the disagreeable situations? How are you going to react when you are facing a disagreeable situation? So whenever a disagreeable situations come, we need to be mindful and we need to address ourselves, we need to talk to ourselves and nothing but the patient comes and play the important role whenever you are facing a disagreeable situation. Probably in our day-to-day -day lives, right? When we are late for the work, everything that you feel uh, a disagreeable situation, when you come, the MRT already left. And when you go to the MRT and it is fully crowded, and when you uh, take MRT to the work, and when you're changing the bus, and the bus is not there. When we are late to work or do something, it is already all the entire scenario creating within in our mind that all those experiences as unpleasant experiences. So whenever we are aware about these disagreeable situations, those are dis Seeing as those disagreeable situation as it is, we are capable of being patient and not uh, being frustrated by this kind of situation. So these are the methods that we can deal with. Further on, that we can go to the boundaries of patience. Why it is difficult for us to practice patience, we need to address. 
we know many information about it is healthy and it is good being patient is our most important thing in our life but still we are struggling what is the reason it is because we are putting a wrong concept in front of our patient whenever we are being patient i am being patient because i am outpowered now you see when you are facing a difficulty in your life if you can't do anything about it a person is stronger than you so what will happen you are outpowered right so that is why you are being patient otherwise you are not being no you are not going to be tolerated this situation right you can't do anything about this person so you are feeling and you are putting this boundary i am being patient because of this if not i will teach him a good lesson so that is how our mind works so that is the boundary that we are setting up and the third one reputation i want to tell him something right straight forward but i am concerned about my reputation there was there are so many people around me maybe they look at me uh, in a different way from today onwards so you are being patient because of certain conditions not because that you want to practice patient are those are the limitation and the third one this is very common i am being patient with him for the first time but it will never happen the second and third so you are counting and keeping journal inside your mind i was uh being patient with first person uh, two times and the second person three times and this is the last time so many kind of thought process that you are creating there are just like a computer there which there are so many folders right all the misbehaviors and forgiven and all those things are folded inside our mind we are carrying through these folders all the time and whenever something happen you check the folder how many time third time okay i will scold him are these are the boundaries that we are creating it is not going to help and the third one opportunity okay i will be patient until i complete this task after that i will teach him some certain lesson you are waiting for an opportunity to get angry then how can you practice patient you are finding some certain reason not to be patient not that you are actually practicing patient and the most important issue that we need to address here i am being patient so when you are putting yourself first already that you are making a mess it is only a time will decide when your patient is going to lose that is why we need to address and be aware what are the boundaries of patient in fact there is no boundary for patient you can't count why you are letting go of those countings you are not waiting for get angry for opportunity and you are not because you are practicing patient because of you are outpowered which mean whenever you have power you are going to do the same thing so uh, probably you may have heard about uh, one of the uh, famous uh, african politician leader uh, uh, sorry i can hear yeah nelson mandela correct so in nelson mandela's story that you can find he was being imprisoned for 20 or 30 years of his life and the person who was uh in as a prison working as a prison guard give him a very hard time he even spit on the food plate that he is giving to the nelson mandela and after 20 or 30 years later when he was being freed and became the president 
he went on a journey and suddenly uh, he wanted to buy something to eat. So he went to this restaurant and the two bodyguards were over there. So a person who is the, the, the chef or the, the owner of this uh, cafe or the restaurant, he is shivering all the time. Whenever he's serving, he's shivering. And when he was leaving, he was shivering. All the time, he was agitated. And then these bodyguards asked, uh, have you noticed, um, uh, President, that this person was nervous? And then he said, yeah, of course, he must be nervous. Because he was the person who gave me a very hard time in the prison. But Nelson Mandela never even utter a negative word. As a president, he could have tortured him. But a real patient comes within a person who realized the importance of being patient. If Nelson Mandela, he was fighting for their own rights, if he started torturing those people back again, this chain will never break. It will continue. If you want to break a chain, of reaction, you have to be patient. So that is the uh, boundaries of patient. There are no boundaries, right? And the fifth topic, the subtopic, how to develop patient. So there are so many different methods that you can develop your patient. Many. If you go and Google, there are a list of uh, ways comes and you may have learned from your mother and father, your grandmother, grandfather, and your teachers, different kind of methods. I will go through several of them. Uh, the first one, uh, practicing optimism. Here, specifically, we need to clear something and clear our doubt. Many people think being patient is a, a very uh, simple thing. And being patient means that uh, Everybody can come and bully you. And being patient means a person who is not seeking the success. Not, he does not want to get things done. So these kind of misconceptions are there. But whenever you know and whenever you practice the importance of patience, and how do you feel when you are becoming patient, you know that it is a positive and a very strong thing. right? And there are many people in this world, right? It is easy to uh, get angry. All of us can, right? Suddenly we can get angry. But very few people can be patient when a difficulty is being uh, presented. So that is why it is a very hard thing, and but it is the correct thing that we need to do. Therefore, it is a positive thing. And the second one, take a break. So if you are very busy and if you are working very hard, it is common to uh, get agitated because everybody needs some certain kind of a rest. Probably that is the purpose of these meditation retreats, right? So have you been to a meditation retreat? When you being to a meditation retreat, once you coming back, after when you are contacting with your friends and the environment, they can see that you are having some certain composed and also calm behavior. But when you are exposed to this common world, you are overturning that calmness and you are becoming one of them, right? So you can see the changes. So that is why Taking a break is important. That break may be a holiday, or ideally, it, it may be a, a meditation retreat, right? And the third one, uh, utilizing the time management. So it is very important. We are becoming so much upset because of the, the, the time factors. And uh, we are giving our priorities for unnecessary things, and when uh, we need to submit our uh, worksheets and all those uh, related activities and all those uh, important things, we are being late. So we, whenever we are not utilizing our time, managing our time well, it is, we are prone to be uh, 
angry and upset and losing our patient. But as long as you are aware, these are the factors that you can well prepared beforehand, right? So that is why it is important. And the, the fourth one, know your limits. We can't do everything. We want to do, it is good to do all, but there are human limitations. We all have 24 hours per day, right? So we can't take it all. You had to let go some of these things. So if you know how to let go, you know uh, uh, the importance of being patient and how you can practice patience. And knowing limits is very important. And the, the fifth one, it's okay to say no. If you dislike or if you can't cooperate, if you can't do it, it is okay to say no because uh, you can't please the entire world. So it's okay to set up some boundaries. Otherwise, you are becoming impatient and it is not good for your health as well. So saying no is, which is okay and it is right to do that. You have that right to do. And slowing down. If you are chasing so many things in your life, you are becoming impatient. So we have to work hard, of course, but do not uh, live for working. Right? We need to live, and working is a part, section of this living. Therefore, we need to know how to slow down our process. And it will be good for your mental and physical and all the health in even your... It is healthy for your family members also. Because whenever you are not slowing down, they are also running with you to catch up with you. It is difficult. And you are creating difficult environment for them as well. And accepting what you can't change. There are some things that we can't change. You can be so patient, but you can't. You can't do all those changes. Even Buddha was not able to. There are some certain limitations that human beings can do. Therefore, we need to accept that some things can't change. We had to move on. And understanding what patient is and isn't. So what is patient and it is important to be patient and what is not patient that which we have discussed. So having a proper understanding about your patient, it is a plus point that you can develop your patient. And uh, then the, uh, the last, uh, last second one, uh, identify what triggers your impatient. So when you know that these are the things that are going to make me impatient, you, need, you can and you have the ability to prepare beforehand. So be aware about what are the factors that usually makes you impatient. And then learn how to be a good listener. It is very important. Many people are losing their patience because they are not good listeners. We are listening and we want to give a, a, a very uh, quick answers for them. Sometimes they do not want answers. They want just someone to talk. When you try to give answers, you are getting angry and they are getting angry. Therefore, be a good listener and it will help to your friend, your family and the environment that you are living. So, after this all, if you have any question inside your mind, how should I practice patience, you can use this diagram. Do you have a problem? Yes, do you have. And then, can you do something about it? Two answers, either yes or no, right? Yes. And then why you patient? Then why you are impatient? If you can do something, you shouldn't be impatient, right? And then, if you say, can you do something about no? Then again, go back to the same answer, right? Then why we impatient? And then, the second question. Do you have a problem? He said yes. Now he says no. And then what will happen? 
If there is no problem, then why you are impatient? So, impatient is not that something uh, that you need to be worried. But many people in their lives, they want something to be worried. Probably now you may have seen some of your friends, right? Very minor things, but they are making it bigger and they want to occupy their mind and being worried with those things. That is how their lives. Probably now you decide to go to Malaysia and today is a public, is it a public holiday? Oh, no, somehow, uh, since if you suppose a, a public holiday, now you decided to go very early. So you went very early in a causeway, always traffic jam, right? But you met a traffic jam and while you are sitting, you can reflect on this. Either can you do about anything about it? No, it is not our control. It is beyond our control. So why we are impatient? Just sit down and wait. No, it is difficult because the way that we have learned is to be worried. We want it and we want to be at least worried, occupy our mind with something. So you need to unlearn this uh, the process. And then sometimes you wake up very early and you cross the uh, causeway uh, and there were no traffic and you went so fast. And after that, you all thinking, right? While having lunch or breakfast, oh, no even a traffic jam, right? And you are being worried about not having a traffic jam. all the time, our mind working in this manner. We want something to occupy our mind. That is why we are being worried all the time. So whenever you are facing any issue, so uh, from uh, after this uh, discussion, there will be no questions for you to ask. I have prepared already answer beforehand, right? So if you have a question, Use this diagram, solve your own problem, right? <laughs> okay, now we are going to the second part. The patient as a, a form of a virtue. So under virtue, there are a few topics that I wish, wish to discuss. Uh, virtue, uh, the second part, the first topic, uh, virtue, mindfulness, and non-self. Uh, this is more related to Buddhist understanding about patient. And wavering patient, which means level one, uh, enduring patient, level two, and forgiving patient, level three, right? So we are going to virtue, mindfulness, and non-self. So what is virtue? A virtuous action means rational choice motivated by desire for what is good in this life and the next, ultimately validated by the final goal, which is nirvana. So this is a very lengthy uh, definition. You can make it very simple. Virtuous action is something which is good for yourself here and now and hereafter. So those are the actions we consider as virtue. And ultimately, those actions help us to attain enlightenment as Buddhist perspective. And then mindfulness. Being alert, being ardent, being intent and experiencing with comprehension and awareness of what is happening in the present moment without judgment or interference. Simply being aware about what is happening. This present moment when you are aware about outside and inside, which is mind and the surrounding. And what is non-self? There is uh, no unchanging permanent self, soul, or essence in all the phenomena. So why I wanted to mention these three important points of Buddhism, whenever you are aware and when you are practicing on theory of non-self, mindfulness, and virtuous action, 
you are already patient. Whenever you are not aware about virtue and not aware about your mindfulness and not aware about your non-self, you are impatient. At the beginning we discussed, right? Patience is a ability, an ability, right? So if it is an ability, we have a hope to develop our patience. So in order to develop, we discuss the general aspect, right? What to do and what not to do. But when you want to go a step higher, which means you are born as a human being and you are living in this society and you are a human being and you are a civilized human being. So it is good enough for you to practice patience uh, as a common human being in general manner. But the issue that you are making when you are practicing that manner, we are putting ourselves in front, right? I am the one who being patient and I will teach him a good lesson when the opportunity comes. We have some certain boundaries, right? So in order to not to create boundaries, we need to have a proper understanding on these three uh, concepts of Buddhism. Now, uh, all of you who are here, I personally believe you are possessing a, generally a good patient. That is why you all are here. Otherwise, you are ending up in a prison or in a hospital, ICU, right? So whenever we are impatient, those are the two possibilities that uh, lead us. So I'm sure that none of you had been to this kind of two extremes, right? So which means that you have some certain ability to be patient, but that patient is limited because you are bottling up your thoughts. That is why time to time you need to cry, you need to shout, you need to scold someone in order to release this bottle up thoughts. But if you are aware of these conditions, virtuous action, mindfulness and non-self, you are not going to bottle up anything. So how you can harbor anger if you see yourself as a non-self, a changing person, and a person who is scolding me right now also changing. It is not the same person that you get angry with. Every second, every hour, we are changing. So don't you think it is so stupid of us? We are harboring anger with someone who has died in their cells, again reborn, and went through the, this peak one whole process. Mentally, he is not the same person. Physically, he is not the person. But we are harboring our angry thoughts on them, and we are impatient. So it is our common mistake that we are creating. When you see a bigger picture, it is easier for you to practice patience. So whenever you are aware, you are nothing but a dust. Nobody can harm you and nobody, you are not doing harm for others because we are understanding the fundamental nature of non-self. And in order to develop non-self, we need to have this mindfulness practices. Therefore, all the virtues preached and uttered by the Buddha are fundamentally uh, joining and fundamentally connected with our practice. So it is an ability that we can develop. This is the path that we can develop it. Now you have a better hope for yourself to be a better version of yourself. Not to be angry and not uh, the important and being patient here and now. 
So uh, we are moving forward the next uh, section that is wavering patient, level one. So this is the level one. Then you are very well aware about the Dhamma and you are very well aware about this uh, general way of patient. How does it work? And now you, even though you are aware about these factors, but your patient still can be wavering. You are a, still a practitioner. So this is the level one. So in the level one, I want to tell you a very short story about a Zen student. Once upon a time, there was a very famous Zen master. So his meditational guidance and practices were very good and he was very famous. Therefore, one student, having known about these qualities, he came to seek a meditational guide from this master. So the master asked him to meditate. Look at this entire world and do you see any differences? So he looked and observed the entire uh, environment and he came after, um, after a few months later he came and uh, tell that the, the, the same master, trees are trees, flowers are flowers, mountains are mountains. So that is what our common understanding, right? The trees are trees, flowers are flowers, mountains are mountains. So he uttered these three things. And then what Sen Master said, go and practice more. And this is story to be continued in level two. So now we are skip going to Venerable Ananda's story, right? You, may, you all may have heard that uh, Venerable Ananda is a very compassionate a uh, monk who supported the Buddha and throughout his life, right? Uh, when uh, the Jetavanara monastery after being built, many followers gained with the Buddhism and one uh, uh, group of people were not happy with that. They wanted to make some a scene over there. Therefore, they hired a lady and uh, asked this lady called Chinchimanavika to go to temple uh, evening and when the time the, the Dhamma discussions are over, when the people are leaving the temple, ask her to go in. Then she goes, the people see, right? And then later she comes out. This thing happened several times and people were also noticing and discussing. And suddenly this lady was disappeared. And the people who plot this story, the scenario, they came to Jetavan Ram Monastery. They said, we saw this lady going to Jetavan Ram Monastery more often and in the evening. Now he created a, a, a very big issue, right? After that, uh, this uh, investigation went on and they found dead body of this lady uh, near the the, the monastic uh, uh, Sangha members, uh, uh, the kutis, the, the rooms area, right? Residential area. And then nobody knows what had happened, but the people who come to temple also saw that this lady is uh, quite often coming in and going out. So they saw this incident. Therefore, they narrated this story. And Buddhist, those who are coming to temple also, started criticizing the Buddha, criticizing the Sangha members. And Venerable Ananda was over there and uh, he can't took it because whenever he goes for the arms round and the monks, they were not giving food and chasing and saying bad things and negative things. Therefore, he came to the Buddha and asked, Dear Buddha, we can't take it anymore. Therefore, we should go to another place. And Buddha was listening and asked one question. If the same kind of a plot happened in that place, where should we go? And then we go to another place. If the same thing happened again, so this is an endless kind of a issue that we are creating. And then the Buddha said, 
okay, wait seven days, and after seven days, the truth will come up. And after that, some person, they were while uh, drunken and talking, they got to know that this is a plot, and this one uh, committed by a group of people who are not happy with Buddha's teaching and the Buddha and Sangha members. So the king investigated this case, case and also the, the king's guard were supported and then later the truth came alive. So that is kind of a, the a passion that most of us are having. Whenever we are facing some difficulty, we want to change. We want to go and uh, run away from the issues. But it is only for a short period of time. If we go to the next place and the same thing happen, then where we should go? Your work life may be a difficult one and there are many hardships, but we need to think about if we are moving into a new section or a new director or to a new boss, how am I going to face this difficulty if they are also creating a difficulty? But it does not mean that you should bear all the difficulties. If you think it is enough, there are boundaries that you can set up, right? So you can go and find a new suitable place. It is totally okay, but you need to be aware the problems are endless in this world. So we need to have a proper patient in order to deal with them. Now we are going to enduring patient, which is the second level. And we are coming to the second part of the sense story. So in this episode, this monk after meditating came back to the uh, sin master and uh, we, the master from the far distance saw that he is very excited. And he came and told the master, trees are not trees, flowers are not flowers, mountains are not mountains. Which means that he has seen something that we can't see. And uh, what do you think the answer of the meditation master? He said, go back and meditate, <laughs> right? So we are going to the next story, which is Sabbhasava Sutta, and we will continue the same story next episode, right? So uh, in Sabbhasava Sutta, the Buddha says, what are the problems to be overcome by enduring? This is not a wavering kind of a faith or wavering kind of a patient. This is a patient that we need to struggle and we need to be patient and we can never live in this world. Those are cold, heat, hunger, thirst, uh, the touch of flies, mosquitoes, wind, sun and uh, reptiles. So we, we can take this section, right? And uh, now since we are living in Singapore, we can deal with reptiles, right? There are no reptiles, so we can omit that part. Uh, how about the sun? Can we? In a certain level, we can. We have an aircon bus system, and we have an aircon uh, MRT system, and we have the ability to control the weather. But it is not all the time. Sometimes we had to face this unbearable heat of a sun. So we have to be patient and enduring about it. And how about the wind? Lucky enough, Singapore is covered from Malaysia and also Indonesia. We are in a, a, a safe place, right? So, but if you take, for example, uh, Hong Kong, all those typhoons, right? Can you do about it any? You can't. You can build some certain manner to control, but when the time comes, it struck so hard and destroys. And how about Japan? Can we do something about tsunamis? No. But you can see the lifestyle that they are uh, carrying out. They do not have permanent and a very well-established houses. In the coastal areas, 
only a very minimalistic kind of a living that they are live it is because of the environmental factors also one of the reasons so you can see we can have this ability either deal with or run away from it but enduring people we are facing the challenges because wherever we go we can't overcome all those uh, created issues how about mosquitoes yeah in a way that we can control flies can how about the hunger and uh, heat cold and thirst those things we can control but we can never eliminate them so whenever you are hungry don't worry and don't be impatient it is easy whenever we are hungry it is a common saying right hungry person is a angry person right so but i am sure that as singaporean all of you who are living here you have never faced that hunger that we are talking about this is indian context in buddha's time this is the real hunger we are talking about we are talking about the thirst real thirst that which we have never been through in our life i suppose and the flies and mosquitoes and you all want to run to a jungle and meditate and leave all the problems right and these are the things that you have to bear when you are in a jungle can you control you can't so these things we have to face and overcome and we are going to the next section and ill spoken words unwelcome words bodily feelings uh, when they are arising a painful racking sharp piercing disagreeable and displeasing can you run away from these no whenever we are sick we had to go through that process but we can reduce this pain and body aches in some certain level but not to 100% right so those things that we have to bear we have no choice so being patient whenever you are facing such kind of a condition is important the buddha has given many examples uh, how to be patient with this kind of situations and the most important one is to be mindful and be aware about these practices because we can't run away from all these things throughout our life therefore it discuss in this manner so we need to endure some certain patient in limitations but if you are a practitioner of mindfulness observing uh, fourfold mindful practices there are section of vedana anupassana being aware about sensation and there are people those who are practicing on this uh, meditational practices they can prolong or they can have a a better uh, intake of pain it has been proven in even medically and uh, uh, it has been proven if you are practicing this kind of a meditational practices so kaya anupassana veda anupassana and all those things are important when we are living our life therefore patient is directly linked with our day to day activities how we are living here and now otherwise do not think that whenever you are uh, coming up with some certain difficult sicknesses you may think it's okay i can be patient but you never practice any kind of a meditational technique or any kind of a, a beforehand you haven't had any experience do you think that you can go through this process no we need some certain kind of a practice level in order to deal with these issues and we are going to a forgiving kind of a patient the level 3 right and we are continuing the sense story right and after he was given some certain kind of period this uh, monk the student came to this uh, meditation master with calmness 
and also more uh, uh, composed manner and said, flowers are flowers, trees are trees, mountains are mountains. And then the master stood up and asked him to give instruction for the newcomers. In this world, when we are practicing something, at the beginning it is very tough. In some certain level, when we take control, it is very easy and we are very much excited about it, right? You are going through an exam process or you are going through some assignment and work and suddenly you overcame it, you are very much happy and you are excited, you have the sense of achievement, I did it and everything, right? But when you are, after this episode, when you are practicing further, you see that in this world, there is nothing black and white. There is no good and bad. That is what the Buddha asking us to practice, the meditation of mindfulness. At the beginning, it is tough. We need to practice. And then later, sometimes you are enjoying the meditation and you are your ego also boosting up. Oh, I'm a wonderful meditation practitioner. You have to meditate again, if you have this kind of uh, thought, right? And then later, you are coming in peace and you are realizing no difference between these people. That is what the understanding of Arahantas. They do not have uh, good people. They do not see bad people. They see people as people. Flowers are flowers. Trees are trees, mountains are mountains. But understanding is different. Now you don't go outside and say, right? Flowers are flowers, mountains are mountains, trees are trees. You are referring to your intellectual knowledge, not your first-hand witness, witness knowledge, right? Therefore, practice more. Now we are going to Arhan Sariputta. So Arhan Sariputta's story is a very interesting story. Some of you who learn in a diploma class, I can see those faces, you may aware about this, uh, which I have explained, right? And uh, now it is time for anyone who is interested. Can you continue the talk from here, my diploma students? Okay, then I will continue. So Arhan Sariputta, uh, one occasion, Venerable Sariputta uh, was in a three months of rainy retreat. After rainy retreat's over, these monks are free from all the uh, three months of period staying in one place, right? So these monks are coming in a group and they are going out to different parts, traveling and also practicing and teaching the Dhamma. So when uh, Arahan Sariputta uh, about to leave this uh, Jetavanara Monastery, uh, few monks were interested to join with him. So since Arahan Sariputta is a quite a, a, a famous figure in Buddhism, many monks aspired to be like him and want to join with them. But the group became very big. Last moment, one monk came, he wanted to join. Venerable Sariputta kindly said, you can't join because our group is too big. Why? When the group is too big, it is difficult for the villagers to provide uh, these requisites, food, lodging, and the medicine and all, right? Therefore, he humbly refused. But this monk was very upset and he got angry. He said, okay, I will do something about uh, Venerable Sariputta and wait until he leaves the Jetavanara monastery and went to the Buddha and complained. Venerable Sariputta uh, slapped me, slapped my ear and my ear drum is broken. So the Buddha knew this is not going to happen from an Arahant. Therefore, Buddha knew 
this need to be addressed right here and now venerable ananda sent to stop uh, moving away from the jetavanara monastery ask them back to the uh, jetavanara monastery all the monks came and gathered in the uh, the 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 hall dam hall and uh, ask venerable anand venerable uh, Sa arhan sariputta is that true did you slap this venerable and uh, broke his ear eardrum and then uh, uh, arhan sariputta did not refuse and did not accept he gave this wonderful analogies starting from the earth and venerable sariputta said Dear Buddha, I am just like this earth. Many people throw urine, dust, pus, blood, and every dirty thing. And not only that, so many wonderful fragrant flowers also falling from the trees into this earth. But this earth never gets angry with those people who are throwing those blood and pus and also this earth does not appreciate those who are throwing flowers as well i am practicing myself i am considering myself as this earth the second one dear buddha i am just like a water those blood pass and all the dirty things we wash with the water right and then this earth never gets angry with us it never reject and boycott us taking this dirty water i do not want at the same time when the rivers are flowing from the mountains of himalaya there are so many fragrant flowers are falling also to this water but this water does not say i only accept this kind of wonderful fragrance and beautiful flowers it just run normally and naturally to the sea i also follow and practice being just like water and the fire so i do not want to go one by one right the fire also the same it does not reject good things only i can burn i do not burn negative uh, dirty things it just burn and the air also the same not only that i am just like a doormat a duster many people come and criticize me i do not get angry many people come and praise me i do not overjoy i am just like a duster and uh, i am practicing a life of a outcasted boy i do not get angry when uh, capable people comes and bully me and good kind hearted people come and support me i am practicing like an outcasted boy being very much humble and this is also a certain analogy that you can see in ancient india it is believed uh, the bulls the cows those who are leading the herds once they fight with another cow once his horns are broken which mean he is defeated nobody cares about him he leaves to death nobody gives food or nobody gives support nothing because he is a defeated one i am practicing like a bull which broken horns there are some more other examples these are the several of them and then after listening to these explanations the monk was regret a lot to whom did i accuse falsely accuse and then later he asked forgiveness from arahan sariputta but arahan sariputta again asked immediately forgiveness if i have done anything wrong without knowing please forgive me also can you see the qualities of an arahan that much humble nature to practice like that i think we need to be an arahan we can't even think about such 
a great quality that a possessing in an arahant. But when someone is practicing in such manner in this today's society, everybody looking down on these people, trying to abuse them more, trying to take advantage from them more. So where are we heading? We are heading to civilized society or declining from civilized society? We need to question. If you see a humble person, that person is more closer to the Nibbana than any other practitioner. Humble nature is the utmost thing which appreciated by the Buddha. So try to be humble and in order to be humble, you need to first develop patience. Without patience, you can't be humble. So be patient and come one step closer to arahanthood, the sainthood. Feel the joyfulness of being humble. Now we are going to some other uh, related stories uh, regarding the Buddha's life. Seeing it is already nine o'clock, I'm not going to explain these stories. You can go and uh, read, right? The Kakachupam Sutta, in Kakachupam Sutta, Buddha advised the importance of being an, uh, a patient person. How to practice being a patient, kind, uh, uh, how to practice patient according to the Buddha in the Kakachupam Sutta? It says, when a person comes and tear apart with a saw, your both hands and legs, limbs apart, if you are a true practitioner of Buddhism, you can't harbor any grudge against the person who is doing that. So that is the demarcation of true practitioner of Buddhism. Are we closer to that kind of a stage? Can we proudly say that we are Buddhist? So anyway, it is okay. We are still practicing. So practice makes perfect. Do not uh, be just give attention to your knowledge, what you are studying, but also give some certain uh, space for your practice as well. That is Kakachopam Sutta. And Rahula Vada Sutta, the Buddha advised Rahula to follow those diff uh, the similar kind of analogy uh, which we went through Arahan Sariputta's life. So practice like earth, water, fire, and air. So that is the advice from Buddha to Venerable Rahula. In Alavaka Sutta, King, uh, uh, demon Alavaka tried to uh, intimidate Buddha, asking him to come in and goes out, come in again and goes out again and for the third time as well. But the Buddha said, no, I'm not. Which means, even though you are a person who is compassionate, it does not mean that you are letting yourself bullied by others. You can always set up a boundary. Learn to say, no, enough is enough. But when we are saying that, we are not losing our temper. We are calm and composed. And uh, Akkosa Bharadvaja Sutta, also the same. Uh, the Buddha went to Akkosa Bharadvaja's house and asked, food and then he criticized a lot about the Buddha and after listening to all those criticisms Buddha asked one question so when uh, you heard that your relatives are coming to your house as a Brahmin do you treat them well or not then he said proudly yes I'm treating because I have a good reputation I make different kind of food and I treat them very well in that case when that relatives were not able to come or after coming they reject this food, what would you do? Of course, this food belongs to me. I will consume all. And then Buddha calmly and composedly answered back, now I came to your house. You treated with me negative words which you had and I'm not going to accept it. Are you going to return or take it back, all those negative things? 
And then that is the time he realized we are giving what we have. If we do not have something good, can we give something good? There is an English saying, don't treat people as bad as they are. Treat people as good as you are. So if someone criticizing you, scolding you, and you are going to do the same thing, what is the difference between that person and you? Because we are giving what we have. If you are impatient and intolerable, you have no endurance, and you are angry all the time, fussy, and all those things, that is what you are giving to the world. Depending on all those things, people know those are the things that you are possessing. That is why you are giving to them back to the society. That is why we need to be aware and be cool and calm, composed, following the teachings of the Buddha. And after that, there are some other suttas also in uh, Anguttara Nikaya, Panchaka Nipata, uh, the, the positive cons uh, consequences and negative consequences of being a patient person. If you are a patient person, many people like you, you are not filled with hatred, not many faults that you are carrying, and you, are will, you will experience an a unconfused death, and also you, are, you will be reborn in a heavenly realm. So these three factors, do not think about uh, the other two, because we haven't in encountered that, and also we have no, not really know, and we are known that in intellectual level, that there is a rebirth. But you can focus on these three qualities, liked by many people, not filled with a hatred, and not, you are not having many faults. Sometimes we think that everybody targeting on us and creating difficulties on us, and because that I am a good person. But you need to check. If all of your good friends are leaving you, if all the people are criticizing you, you need to check whether the problem with them or with yourself. So you need to check. And then, these are the negative consequences, disliked by many people. If you are short temper and you are always agitating and nobody wants to be around with you, right? So, disliked by many people, you are always filled with agitation, hatred and anger and carries many faults. And do not uh, take it lightly, because whatever we are doing here and now inside our mind, that is what we are going to continue throughout in this samsaric life. So it is a samsaric accumulation. If you want to turn it around, break the change, be patient. And we are going to the part three. I'm not going to take a uh, long time for this. Patient as a perfection. I'm sure now you have a very well sound knowledge about patient. Now we are going, we discuss about general understanding and we discuss about Buddhist understanding and now we are going how to make it a perfection and a parami. So perfection, parami are wholesome qualities that uh, virtues to be developed and unwholesome action to be performed with the sole purpose of gaining enlightenment in order to escape from suffering and the cycle of birth and death. So that is what parami is all about. Whenever you are becoming patient means you are accumulating this parami. But in order to turn this parami into some certain kind of a higher level, which means if you want to be a Buddha, after practicing patience, you need to think, may this quality that which I have practiced be helpful for me to be a Buddha. So this kind of aspiration is needed. When you are keep doing it inside your mind, you are making a process, making a chain. That is how all the bodhisattvas leading to arahant, uh, uh, enlightenment, the Buddhahood. Right? So this is how. And then there are two meanings uh, pertaining to the Pali word called Parami. The first one, carry on uh, carry one to the other other show, which means to the nibbana from sansara to the nibbana, and the secondly, the quality that needs to be developed by one who uh, arises to 
uh, as aspired to be enlightened. So these are the two meanings. So whenever you are practicing this parami with this understanding, you are coming closer to your desired goal. And not only the Buddhahood, there are some monks and lay people who are wish to be like Arahant Sariputta, like Arahant uh, Moggallana, to be like Arahant Mahakashapa. So if you have such kind of a wish in this future uh, samsaric life, may I be a, like an Arahant Sariputta to the Buddha. So you can have some certain kind of a uh, aspiration. So these aspirations are making the change. And then we are going to discuss about the Paramitas and all very well and nicely liberated in uh, Bodhicharyavatara by Shantideva, uh, 1687 to 1786 CE, Kuman era. Uh, this venerable uh, uh, Deva explained how, what is about this important about patience. All the virtues, deeds and merit, such as giving and making offerings that we have accumulated over thousands of eons can be destroyed by just one moment of Impatient. Now you can see impatient, how destructive, how destroying your path. So being patient is utmost important thing in your life. All the frustrations holding that inside your mind, it is because of unability of practicing patience. You can think about your life your experiences, difficult situation that you face, either gratification of, because of your senses or because of not being patient enough. And then there is no evil greater than anger and no virtue greater than patience. Therefore, I should strive in various ways to become familiar with the practice of patience. So different ways. We have discussed those different ways, right? So you can now make use of all those things and strive to be a patient person. Uh, now I'm going to take some Zen story to elaborate this process. How, uh, this is a very common analogy that taming the bull. So this bull can be considered as impatient or anger, whatever negative behavior, destructive behavior that you want to overcome. In this case, I take it as patient. So this bull, right? Now, a person who ventured a journey on a search, we understand we do not have enough patience and we decided to go for searching patient. So now we are all in the journey. We are journeying, ventured into general understanding and we ventured into Buddhist understanding and we ventured into perfection. And then, seeing the footprints, we are going to catch a bull, right? So we see these footprints. Here we embark in earnest uh, on the path. We discover the tools of Dhamma, exploration, and the teachings of the ancestors. So we went through, right, the process. Now we are well equipped, and we know the patient is nearby, the bull, and we are going to catch him. And then, glimpse, and we see the impatient. We need to actually see impatient. Before it occurring inside our mind, we can see it. Before we are overcome by this impatient, we can see it. So here we see for ourselves that the Buddhas and ancestors and our uh, own teachers have not been deceiving us. The patient is real. We are venturing in, we see that sometimes in our life, when we are being patient, we can feel that at last I manage to be patient. And when you come closer to this kind of moments, you are uh, being, uh, what do you call, uh, you are being uh, uh, understood by the, the actions, not by the intellectual level, but the practice, right? And then, the catching the bull. Once you see it, you need to catch. 
Now our patient, right? So we see just how much for a mess our mind are and how quickly, inevitably, we are responding for a grasping and aversion. Whenever grasping comes and aversion comes, we are becoming impatient. But if you want to tame the bull, you need to catch it first. You need to see what are the changes that you can do with patient. Once you catch it, you start taming it. Here, at last, we begin to see the patterns can change. Habit can be unlearned and compassion and wisdom truly can be realized and practiced with patience. So we are now developing, right? Just like the, 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 the monk who is in uh, uh, the same story, right? Now he's at the beginning he was not able to see, but the master asked him to go and practice and now he see it and he is taming, now he is very much excited. And then riding home. Once he is being tamed, you can carry him with. And you are riding the patient. Until now, in our lives, we are trying to be patient. And impatient is the thing that always taking us around. But once you started taming the bull, understanding the, the, the form of patient, you are enjoying it and you are riding on it. Entrusting ourselves to the universe, we receive all those, uh, we receive all that comes and we uh, release all that goes. And then we transcend. Transcend means there are no difference between yourself and patient. Patient and yourself are not two things. Now it becomes one. This is probably the experiences of our hunters, right? So that is how they are being practiced. So having returned home, we, here we can rest. So you are fighting with impatience for a long period of time. And now you know the patient is real. And you see the benefit of it. And now it is easy. It's just like awareness. At the beginning of meditation, you are following the awareness. But when you started experiencing awareness, awareness and you are becoming one, which means entire awareness always pervades inside your mind. So we are now in a house and we are resting. That is the experience of Arahantas and the Buddha who eradicated all the defilements. Even though we are thinking this is our home, this is not our true home. Our true home, our resting place is enlightenment. And then we are transcending self and other. We are not going to stop from over there. We are not only stop and enjoying this bliss. And here, it's just like a monk, right? Again, he comes back practice meditation and he says, trees are trees, flowers are flowers, mountains are mountains. At the beginning, he says they are two different things and at the middle, he sees it as one thing and when it comes to final salvation and liberation, when you are practicing it and when you are teaching it, it becomes again two things because if we think this universe as one and all, everything is empty and all those things, we can teach or we can show path for others. That is why Arahantas, they enjoy the bliss and then later they decide to come back to the society and teach. And throughout their journey, they had to go through these difficulties difficulties of hunger and thirst and uh, negative words from others and abusive words and actions from others, they have to take it. But they are taking it with understanding, without regrets and with compassion towards entire human beings and sentient beings. And then we come to the source. We realize our moral responsibility in the society, we dedicate 
we did we decide to contribute back to the society so we go back to the society not staying in a mountain and enjoying that bliss we need to contribute to the society and then we are returning to the our normal society while we are living with patient with ourselves and others we teach others how to be patient so this is the journey of an arahan and this must be the journey of all of you who learned in bpc right you have learned it and you have mastered it now it is time back to give it to the society not only you are enjoying yourself with patience you need to teach others how to be patient and you need to support others when they are having difficulties so that is the purpose of entire process and this process is considered as a practice of parami so the bodhisattvas they have ability to attain enlightenment but they reject that bliss and comes to this society weep with us uh, uh, and getting blame from us and all those activities doing with happiness for the great cause similarly we all need to go back to society and support now your responsibility those who attend for this dhamma talk at least share with five people the most important aspect that you find how to be patient so that is your distribution and contribution to the society thank you very much for being patient and don't forget to be patient thank you so much yeah if we have any questions we have a uh, 10 15 minutes yeah thank you bhante for the talk we have 5 minutes for q and a any questions No questions? Okay, if there's no questions, we will do transfer of merits. Okay, uh, let's share this merit with all the divine beings who are sending protection to all of us. May the good deva share these blessings. May they rejoice with these blessings. May they extend their protection towards all of you. Akasatta cha bhumatta deva naga mahidika punyantang anumoditva chirang rakkang tu sasanang Akasatta cha bhumatta deva naga mahidika पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रक्खं तु देशनं आकाशट्टा च बुम्मट्टा देवानागा महिदिका पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रक्खं तु त्वं सदा अभिवादनशीलिस निचं वद्धापचायिनो चारो धम्मावडंतीयुअन्नो सुख बल आयुरारोग्य संपत्ति सग संपत्ति मेव हतो निबान संपत्ति इमिनाथे समीजत साधु 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 एंड फाइनली आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक Buddhist Saint Paul College alumni and also Buddhist uh, MV Dharma Propagation uh, uh, Society which uh, come together to do this good cause of sharing the dhamma and uh, thank you very much for all of you who 
are here today and attend this Dhamma. And may you all be blessed with good health, happiness and wisdom. Thank you very much. Sad. Okay, please be patient. Before we end, we would like to uh, offer a token of appreciation to Bhante by Brother Jepson. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Next month, we we'll have another talk. We have invited Ajahn Shujato, he is the founder of Sutta Central. The topic of the talk is how to read Sutta, a dialectical approach. Same time, same place. See you all next month. Thank you. 19th of uh, February.